Venice AI is at it again and just dropped a few updates and yeah, they're pretty damn cool. Image editing or in painting is back. There's a social feed now that doesn't spy on you, of course. And auto mode picks the best AI model for your prompt so that you don't have to pretend you know what you're doing. The image editor uses plain English, no code, no special prompting. Just type what you want to change about your image and move on. The social feed, post your creations, see what others are making, and steal all of their prompt ideas like a civilized adult. And auto mode, it picks the best AI model for you and handles both text and images in the same chat. If you haven't opened Venice in a while, now is a good time. And I'm about to show you why. Let's party. Welcome back to Run the Prompts Party Animals. First up, we have Venice's image editor or what some people might call in painting. It is back and I'm about to show you how to use it as well as some pretty cool funny results that I've gotten so far out of the tool. So I'm going to add Donald J. Trump right over here to Venice just by dragging and dropping. And then I'm going to copy and paste my preset prompt here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it look like a fat black woman is trying to kiss him because he had a kissy face in his photo. So let's see what that looks like. And there we go, guys, that's pretty good. Looks just like what we wanted here. So that's the after, that's the before, the after and the before. Quick tip for you guys, add this to the end of your prompt at Venice and I found that this really helps when you just wanna take an existing image and make one change. So I put do not change anything else about the image whatsoever. So you can see that it is pretty much an exact replica for the most part of the original image just with the edit that we wanted. So it did exactly what we wanted. The next one I have for you guys is I'm going to mess with Kim Jong-un and put him in a hip nightclub setting and here's our new image right here guys and let's compare the new image to the original again that's the original that's the new pretty close and it looks just like he's giving a speech inside of a hip downtown nightclub and our next example here is a really cool one so if you guys ever need to take any black and white image and make it color you can do that now with venice and i'm going to show you how it's very simple you just drag and drop your black and white photo and then you add a prompt like this colorize this black and white image there you go it's the color image of the black and white version so we have color let me show you guys black and white so we have black and white we have color we have black and white we have color and some other things you guys should know is that you don't have to use a outside third-party image for this feature to work so it actually works really good when you're creating image inside Venice itself. So if you're creating something, you can keep revising it as much as you want, all with simple nat natural language text prompts similar to the ones that I just did here. The biggest advice I can give you guys after messing with this tool and testing it is change one thing at a time, okay? Change one element of the image that you want changed, one thing that you wanna remove. Just go one by one. It's just not quite there yet at the same level as like, Chad GPT's new image generator. It's good, but it's not at that level. So keep things simple and you'll get nice solid results like the results that I showed you right here. And next up, we have Venice's new social feed. If you guys ever thought Venice would become a social media company, well, you were one step ahead of me, but hey, good news is they're not becoming a social media company, but they did add a social feature, kind of. I think it's cool though. It allows you to do a few different things. So you can share your image and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go back to this. Okay, we have auto mode on. So let's just create an image and then share it so I can show you what that looks like. So create an image of Donald Trump, ghetto of Detroit, a Kim wearing cool sunglasses, hip clothes, huge gold chain tail. As you can see guys, it says prompt enhanced. So what that means is there was a setting right here. This is also new of enhance image prompt. So this will automatically enhance your image prompt with this toggle on if your prompt is less than 200 characters which this was so the ai took the prompt and made it better could be better could be worse but typically what that means is it describes it in more detail it's more specific it usually does a better job so i would actually recommend leaving that on so as you can see these are pretty damn good and we can see which model it selected because i do have auto mode on which i will show you guys as the third example 
of this video, but click this little eye right here for image details and you can see that it defaulted to Hydrine, which is one of the open source models that Venice uses. So we have this right here. So what we're gonna do is just click right here to share the social feed. Now you can include the prompt or if you wanna keep it hidden, you can just hide it. You wanna give it a name that is required. So we're gonna call this Trump really specific because some people may not know who this is. So Donald J. Trump, we're gonna click share. And then as you can see guys, so Venice will give you a totally random username for your social postings. So it's not going to tell people who you are. Clearly, I'm making a video about it on YouTube publicly, so the cat's out of the bag, guys. Now you know my Venice username I put on here. So be sure to follow me on Venice. By the way, guys, I have four followers. So we shared it. This is my profile. These are all the different images that I posted and made. Basically, anything that I thought was really cool, I ended up sharing. And some of them have gotten some pretty good traction. So like this one got 15 likes, which is considered one of the higher ranked images that i've seen on the feed and you can go back to the feed and you can also save images so i saved this one right here anything on the feed you can save so you can have little collections of different images and if they share the prompt with you which this person did not very upset with her because i thought this one was very cool then there will be a little prompt on the bottom of it that you can copy and paste for yourself and if you follow anyone you click over here and as you can see i am not following anybody not yet and then you have your little stream here which shows you which users clicked like on your images and in the future venice did say that they're going to release a comment function which is going to be pretty cool so it'll be a little bit more like the ai image version of instagram in a way only like the really scaled down version of it if you're bored and you need something to do real quick you can come on over here to the feed steal somebody's prompt and modify it mess with it change around the different models and see if you can make one that's a little bit better and before we move any further i want to let you guys know that if you want to save some money on Venice AI, you can use the promo in the video description below, as well as the first comment, and you can get 20% off with that promo code. So be sure to get that code, save some money. Yes, they are an affiliate, but it's a win-win. You get a great product, we get some commission, Venice gets another sale. That's what I call a win-win-win. So back to the video. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys Venice's new auto model selection feature so this one is crazy easy it's literally two clicks so you click this button right here and you go to auto so auto is going to be something that will automatically select which one of these models to use on your prompt right after you type in a prompt the ai will say okay i want to use this model because this question is really complicated or i'm going to use this model because this is a very simple question I'm going to use this model because it involves reasoning. So I'll use the reasoning model and the AI is going to determine that for you so that you don't have to switch in between models. So let's give you a quick example. So when did World War II? So that's about as simple of a question and as binary of a question that, it, that could possibly exist in the world of questions to an AI model. So we're going to hit enter and it gives you the date. And then if you click right here on text details, you can see the model used. So you use the quickest, lowest, least expensive model to do this without reasoning. So that is expected because that's the easiest question in the world. Like that's objective. So with auto mode, there might be some people that are a little bit skeptical of it, thinking that, well, maybe this is just a way for Venice or whoever else. I know Perplexity is doing this and ChatGPT is gonna be coming out with it as well. It might just be a way for these companies to automatically switch you to the least expensive model so that they can save money. There might be an element of truth to that. I don't know specifically, but I have tested it and it seems to do a good job of cycling between the model that makes the most sense. So for questions that involve a lot of steps and reasoning, it does not choose the least expensive model with my testing. And another thing you guys should know is when you have model or when you have auto mode selected, auto applies to both, okay? You can see that this is at the top of this tree. It was a little bit confusing at first. So you have auto selected and now you don't have to go back and forth between an image model and a text model because you have auto selected, which will automatically apply to anything. So now, 
right in the same chat, just like ChatGPT. You don't have to go back and forth between image and text. So right in this same chat, you can just say, create an image of an ice cream cone in the desert all alone. And as you can see, prompt enhanced is right up here, just like the last one, because we do have that feature enabled and that looks really good. All alone in the desert, an ice cream cone. And then also guys, when you click on this eye icon, you can see the enhanced prompt right here. So this was the prompt that the AI created for you automatically based on that very, very simple prompt that I gave it. And I think this one looks even better. Very cool. And you might be wondering, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to keep auto on for the most part, like probably 80%, maybe 90% of the time. I'm just going to leave it on. When there's specific questions that I have for Venice that I know require a lot of power or reasoning or whatever, then I'll switch it to manual. But for the most part, I'm leaving it on. I've been impressed with it and I like it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this edition of Run the Prompts on YouTube. If you got any amount of value from this video whatsoever, give me a like, a comment, and subscribe to this channel. We are storming towards 1,000 subscribers. I never thought there would ever be a 1,000 people in this world that care about what I have to say. So this is really groundbreaking stuff for me. So do me a favor, subscribe, and let me know how you like these new features in Venice. And let me know if I missed anything about these features that I should have covered but didn't. And I'll talk to you guys next time. And remember to run the prompts and prompt the planet.